This is slide seven, uh, farmer's plight. And plight uh, simply means problems, difficulties, struggles, things like that. Uh, this will be the uh, probably the longest slide of this unit. A lot to talk about uh, because this is a huge topic. We have said uh, farmers uh, throughout the 20s were already having problems because uh, they were growing too much food, overproduction, nobody was buying it, Europe stopped buying after World War I. Uh, so even in the 20s, when everybody else was doing incredibly well, farmers were struggling, and things just get worse for them um, as we go through the 1930s. So let's talk about their uh, their problems here. Um, the government is going to do what it can to help, not a lot, but um, let's talk first of all about the AAA, uh, and again, it's not the American Automobile Association, it's not AAA. Um, this is the Agricultural Adjustment Act, or the Agricultural Adjustment Administration. The administration is the group, the act is the thing they do, so whichever. Uh, the Agricultural Adjustment Act. Um, it uh, tried to get farmers more money by establishing something called parity payments. Now, parity simply means um, equality, trying to make things more equal. Uh, and what happened was the government um, set prices for food back to uh, what they were during World War I. So when farmers were making a lot of money. Um, right before World War I, during the war, um, when farmers were making a lot, they set the prices back to what they cost then. Now, does that mean people are going to be having, uh, people are going to have a harder time buying food? Yes, it does. Um, but as the decade goes on, remember, people are getting jobs again. They're making money. They can afford to buy food. So if they can afford to buy food, we want to make sure they're paying enough for it so that the farmers can make money themselves. So parity payments. We want to make prices equal to what they were back when farmers were making a lot of money. So now the catch is, for prices to go up, quantity has to go down. So part of the Agricultural Adjustment Act was that it paid farmers not to farm. They had to stop growing as much food uh, because too much food drives prices down. So we're going to pay farmers to farm less. Um, honestly, inspectors would go around and they would check farmers' fields. Uh, if they only had half their fields planted, they got a payment from the government. If they had all their fields planted, they didn't get the payment. So we're going to pay them to stop growing food because they're growing too much food. Okay. Now, that's a problem at the beginning of the decade. As the decade goes on, we really have the big problem uh, known as the Dust Bowl. Okay. The Dust Bowl was a nine year drought. It did not rain for nine years in the middle of the country. Now, if you see the map on the slide here, um, the drought affects the whole middle part of the country. Right here, the Great Plains area. This whole area, even up into Canada. That's why the little, uh, pointer is going up into Canada there. Um, that's the dust, the, the area affected by the drought. The Dust Bowl, the worst of it, is this small little area right here that covers parts of those five different states you see there. Colorado, Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, and New Mexico. They saw the worst of the drought, um, mainly because you combine heat with it as well. Um, the Dust Bowl... Uh, again, nine years of no rain. Now, you may get a sprinkle here or there, but not enough to do any good. No appreciable rainfall for nine years. Okay. Um, now, problems, some of the things are out of the farmer's control, like rain. You can't make it rain. Um, but some of it is their own fault. Farmers are a very stubborn people. They know how to do one thing. They know how to farm, and they know how to farm really well. Um, so they keep doing it. So they would plow the land and plant their seed. 
which loosened all the topsoil. And then, because it's the Great Plains, wide open area, no big forests, no big mountains, no hills, nothing to stop the wind. When the wind comes sweeping down the plain, as the song goes, um, it would pick up all of that loose topsoil and blow it away. And farmers would think, huh, there went all my topsoil and all my seed. I guess I better plow some more. So they would plow some more and plant more seed. And then the wind would come and it would blow it away. And what you would end up with are dust storms called black blizzards. Okay. And if you look at the, uh, the pictures here on the, uh, on the screen, this one right here, this is an example of a black blizzard. Um, that looks like clouds. You know, a storm is coming in. That's dirt. It's just dust and dirt that's been picked up by the wind, and it's blowing that dirt and that dust across the country with it. And that dirt would bury anything in its path. They're known as black blizzards because it's as if it has snowed and snowed and snowed and you were buried under feet of snow, but you're really just buried under feet of dirt. Look at this top picture here. That's a car, or what's left of it. This is what's left of a wagon. See the wheels sticking up above the, uh, the dirt there. Those, that's a car and a wagon that's been buried in dirt from a black blizzard, a dust storm. This is a picture of a modern dust storm in, that hit Phoenix a couple of years ago. You can see that just wall of dirt being picked up uh, from the desert there um, and just buries Phoenix. Okay? So black blizzards were significant problems. The worst of them is known as Black Sunday. Black Sunday. It occurred in 1935. Winds gusted as high as 60 to 70 miles per hour on that day. And that's just when it started. The dust storm continued for close to a week. 30 to 40 mile an hour winds constantly blew and buried anything in its path. So... Your house, you would have to dig out your house. You know how when a, a blizzard happens and you have snow piled up against your door and you have to dig your way out? People would have to dig their way out of their houses to get dirt. Sometimes it was easier to open a window and climb out the window. You could step out of the window straight onto dirt. It had piled that high uh, against your house. Now, that's inconvenient, yes, but it can also be deadly because of something called dust pneumonia. Dust and dirt would get everywhere. It would get into everything. Nowadays we have, you know, airtight houses with airtight windows and doors and this and that. You didn't have anything like that back then. You had houses built out of wood uh, and there were cracks between the boards and you could, uh, dirt would blow into your house. It got into everything. It got into your food. It got into your water. You couldn't take a drink of water without getting dirt um, in the glass and in your mouth when you drank. Um, you would breathe it in constantly. When you slept, you breathed in dirt. And what happens is that your lungs start to get filled with dirt. The young, the very young, small children, infants, and the elderly would often die from dust pneumonia because they don't have the strength to cough the dirt out of their lungs and they would suffocate. People would go to doctors to get treated for this. Um, they, would, uh, they would cough up dirt clods as big around as a pencil and several inches long. Just dirt that had collected in your lungs. Uh, if you've ever seen a cat cough up a hairball, it's the exact same thing. But you would be coughing up dirt from your, uh, from your lungs. Okay. Now, um, another problem here. Um, sort of an inconvenience, I guess, um, occurred with animals. You had to feed your animals. You know, your animals would die uh, in the middle of this. Um, you didn't have water to grow large amounts of crops. You had a well, so you could maybe get water 
uh, from a well to water your little backyard garden. Maybe you were able to grow enough food in your backyard uh, to feed your family. You certainly didn't grow enough to sell and make a living as a farmer, uh, but you could grow enough to feed your family. So you'd have a little uh, garden in your backyard. The problem was animals were starving too. Um, millions and millions of wild jackrabbits came down out of the mountains, the Rocky Mountains, onto the plains looking for food. Uh, and the rabbits would start eating the food in your backyard garden. Well, if it came down to a choice between whether the rabbit eats or my family eats, well, family's going to eat and the rabbit's going to die. So communities would hold what were called rabbit drives. They would, a uh, whole little town would gather together and they would build these huge pens um, and they would form, you know, like a police line. Everybody would line up uh, and they would march together to kind of funnel these rabbits uh, into these huge pens where they would kill them. I'm going to show you a cool video uh, of that when they get into class. But uh, they would hold these rabbit drives to round up thousands and thousands and thousands of rabbits um, and kill them. Now, I guess you could eat the rabbits once you killed them, but wild jackrabbits are uh, pretty tough, very stringy meat. It's not good eating. I guess you could if you were desperate, and a lot of people were. Um, but uh, the rabbits are looking for food just as uh, people are. One of the problems farmers had is, as we've talked about before, mechanization. We now have new um, uh, machinery, new inventions, tractors. Uh, reapers, steel plows that allow farmers to plow more land quicker. So what you end up with is more land being plowed, the wind would come through, pick up the dirt, blow it away, they'd plow again, wind would come through, pick up the dirt, throw it, blow it away. Because you never knew when the rain was going to start. And if, you know, tomorrow it rained and rained and rained, you better have your seed in the ground if you're going to be able to grow anything. So all farmers knew to do was, uh, was plow, and it just led to more and more dirt. The entire eastern two-thirds of the United States, from the Great Plains to the east, got dirt dumped on it when these dust storms would start blowing. So big, huge cities uh, all over the east, small towns all over the east, got dirt dumped on them from the Midwest, Louisville included. Um, Chicago, there's a story of uh, after the Black Sunday storm came through, uh, it dumped dirt on Chicago. It dumped enough dirt on Chicago that every citizen in Chicago, second largest city in the United States at the time, every citizen of Chicago, there was enough dirt dumped on that city that every citizen could have his very own five-pound bag of dirt. There are stories told of ships, Navy ships, in the Atlantic Ocean, off the coast, uh, east coast of the United States, in the Atlantic Ocean, woke up to an inch of dirt on their decks that started in the Great Plains. So these dust bowls, uh, or dust bowls, sorry, dust storms uh, were significant problems. Now a lot of people tried to stick it out, but even more gave up. They were known as Okies, or Arkies, okay? uh, because they came from Oklahoma, or Arkansas, most commonly Okies. Um, these are families that stuck it out as long as they could, but just gave up. They couldn't pay their mortgage on their farm, they couldn't farm, couldn't grow anything, and that's all they knew how to do. So, they give up, basically. And what they will do is, they will pack up everything they have, which in a lot of cases isn't much, and they will load it onto the old family truck, as you see in this picture here at the bottom of the slide. Okay? And they will pack up the family, everything they own, and head west to California. Now, if you'll look at the map, there is a line here that I'm drawing with the pointer. It goes kind of like that. Okay? And they would follow a road that went from Chicago through the Dust Bowl, southern part of it, to California, basically like that. Okay. This road was known as Route 66. It's the most famous 
um, road in American history, Route 66. If you've ever seen the Disney um, Pixar thing, uh, Cars, uh, they talk about Route 66 in there. So Okies would pile up everything they had onto Route 66, and they would head west to California because they had heard that things were better in California. Because remember, west of the Rocky Mountains over here, there's no drought. They were getting rain over here. So you could farm and you could grow over here and just fine. Here's the Rocky Mountains. This part got no rain. So they're trying to get to the west, to California. Okay. Problem is, they discover once they get to California, California doesn't want them either. Remember, the Great Depression's going on. Nobody has jobs. So California has enough problems of its own. The last thing they want are millions of farmers from the plains coming to California looking to work. So these families would risk everything they have to get to California just to find out that California doesn't want them. Okay. Uh, there's a famous story written by great American or, uh, author, uh, John Steinbeck. John Steinbeck writes a novel called The Grapes of Wrath. And The Grapes of Wrath is the story of an Oki family, the Joad family, uh, J-O-A-D, the Joad family, uh, and their story of trying to stick it out in Oklahoma but giving up, heading west. Uh, you got to realize, this is not, they're not simply going on vacation. This is a, a, a life or death trip here. Because the area they're traveling through, right here, okay, Southern California, Arizona, New Mexico, that's desert. Um, temperatures are well over 100 degrees during the day. Uh, it gets down to freezing at night. You're traveling in an old rickety truck with no air conditioning, virtually no heat. If you break down in the middle of the desert here, you are going to die. Plain and simple. That's all there is to it. So these people are risking their life because they see no other option. Right? Dust Bowl was a horrible problem. In uh, 1939, the rains came back. Nobody knows why, but all of a sudden, this part of the country got rain again. Nine years of no rain, all of a sudden it started raining again. So... Uh, dust Bowl was a horrible time for farmers. 